Hello and welcome to another installment of FormatCColon.com tutorials. In these tutorials we pick apart and explore topics pertaining to desktop platforms, server administration, network administration, virtualization, web development, and pretty much everything in between. For more in-depth information on any of our topics, please visit our site at www.formatcolon.com where you can find a full step-by-step -step text version of all of the commands and steps performed in each of the video tutorials here, along with tons more videos including tips, tricks, and much more. Hello again, and welcome to another FormatCColon.com tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to discuss installing and configuring the dog tag certificate system. What the dog tag certificate system is, is essentially an open source certificate authority that we can install within our organization to issue our own SSL certificates. Generally, when you're developing a production web application, a lot of times, depending on the content that you're housing in your application, you may want to secure the traffic between the clients, the people that are accessing your web application, and the actual web application over some sort of an encrypted channel via SSL. In the event that you want to do this, you need to generally go to a certificate authority such as Thought or GoDaddy or one of these other uh, certificate vendors and purchase a certificate. Now, um, a lot of times certificates aren't really that expensive. You might be able to pick one up from like GoDaddy, for instance, for about 80 bucks. However, when you are developing the application, uh, you're going to need, you know, potentially to replicate the exact same behavior that you have in your production environment. So therefore, you need to have a development environment, maybe a testing environment, maybe a staging environment. And all these environments, if you want to replicate exactly what, what is going on in production, are also going to need certificates. And although certificates aren't extremely expensive, um, they can be a little bit cost prohibitive depending on how many test environments you have or how many dev development environments you have. Uh, if you've got 10 developers all working on a particular application and you need SSL certificates for all 10 of those developers, I mean, you know, that can end up racking, racking up to be a couple of hundred dollars very easily. So an alternative to that would be to install an, a product like DogTag, which will allow you to be able to set up a CA in your organization and then issue your own certificates. And then all we need to do is tell all of our developer client machines or anybody that's in the organization's machine to trust the certificate authority certificate being basically to just trust this dog tag server and therefore it will in return trust every certificate that this dog tag server issues out itself. So therefore we can issue an unlimited amount of certificates and we will trust them all within our organization or, or anybody even outside of our organization as long as they uh, go ahead and configure their system to trust the certificate authority that we're setting up. So that's enough of the background of what it is. Let's go ahead and just get started and do it. So to get straight to the fun part, let's go ahead and open up a command line because this is going to be a command line installation. Um, and what we're going to need to do is we're going to SSH into the server that we're going to set up uh, to become the, the certificate authority server. So I'm going to go ahead and SSH into a server that I've got already kind of set up. And the only thing that I've got set up on this server is your typical uh, LAMP stack. So as soon as we get in here. So essentially this server, all it has is uh, Linux, uh, CentOS 6.5, which is a binary distribution of Red Hat. So anything that we do here would be applicable to Red Hat. Um, if I just cat the Etsy uh, Red Hat release file, you'll see that I've got CentOS release 6.5 final. And then also I have... Uh, Apache, uh, let's see, so if we grep for HTBD, which is the Apache daemon, you'll see that I've got Apache 2.215 installed, and then also, if I look for uh, PHP, I've already got PHP configured on this box, um, and I'm using PHP 5.5, um, and I also have MySQL, but we're not going to need MySQL uh, for the, the purposes of this tutorial. Um, another thing that you're going to definitely want to do as a prerequisite is if we go into our etsy yum.repos.d, which is the directory where all of our repositories sit, um, you'll see that I have the EPL and the Remy repository all set up. So um, we are definitely going to need EPL in order to get the dog tag packages. And you'll see that it's just a, a standard EPL uh, repository. I just have the main repository enabled. Everything else is disabled. So you're going to definitely want to go through and uh, grab the EPL package because um, without it, you're not going to be able to proceed with this tutorial. Also, in the Remy package, um, I only have the main Remy 
repository enabled and the PHP 5.5 repository enabled, and that's where I installed the PHP 5.5 from. It is the Remy distribution. So um, if you're looking for any further information on setting this up or where to get those repositories, I have pushed out another tutorial on setting up a LAMP server. Um, by all means, check out that tutorial, and you'll be able to get some more information or check out the blog, and I've got uh, installation instructions along with the locations of where you can get both the EPL and the Remy uh, repositories and how to install them. So um, those are kind of the prerequisites. The next prerequisite, uh, which we're going to do together here, is going to be the host name of the box. So we're definitely going to want to make sure that the host name is going to be set with a fully qualified domain name, and it's going to be something meaningful uh, to identify the server as a certificate authority. So um, I'm going to go ahead and edit my uh, sysconfig network file, which is where the host name is set. And you'll see right now I've just got this 8-bit. I was using this server for a different tutorial at one point. Um, I'm going to name this server dog tag dot my movie db dot local and I've just been doing a lot of tutorials with the my movie db dot local um, domain name so I'm just going to kind of keep keep with that and we'll just use that domain for now and I'm just going to name the, the server dog tag and you can name this anything like certificate server or whatever is applicable in your your particular organization and obviously you would want the fully qualified portion of the host name to match your organization so you know like mycompany.com or mycompany.local or whatever your domain is so I'm just gonna for demonstration purposes set this up nice and simple dog tag dot my movie db dot local so I'm gonna go ahead and, and write that and then I do need to reboot the server and rebooting will just make sure that it sets the host name in all the applicable places and now that it's back up uh, after a quick reboot uh, we'll notice that the host name is now set to dog tag so the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is install 389 DS and what 389 DS is, is it's essentially a Linux directory server and that kinda of is a foundation piece that the CA or the certificate authority uh, console is going to need in order to be able to issue certificates so um, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually set up a user for the directory server and I'm just gonna do a quick user add uh, let's say uh, DS 389 and that's going to create the user in the group. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install um, the 389-DS package. And again, this is going to be pulled from EPL. So if you do not have EPL installed, this is not going to work. So make sure you definitely have EPL, uh, the repository, turned on. And it would help if I typed in install. So let's grab that. Okay, and now um, once that completes, the next thing that we're going to need to do is actually, um, before we run the installer or the configuration script, what we need to do is we need to make sure that uh, the directory server is going to be able to identify itself. So um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to edit my Etsy hosts file, and I'm just going to put in an entry here um, that's going to identify the IP address. Oops, to the host name that we just set up, which is going to be dog tag dot my movie db dot local. And I'm going to save that and then test it real quick. So I should now patine, huh? Ping dog tag dot my movie db dot local. Okay, and we are resolving correctly. So now we can go ahead and run the configuration script. And that configuration script is going to be located under uh, user sbin, and then it's going to be setup dash ds ds dot pl. So let's go ahead and run that guy, and it's just going to ask us to say, "Hey, you're running this as root. Is that okay? Would you like to continue?" Yes. Um, it's going to give us a little bit of a, a warning here about file descriptors and open file descriptors. Um, if we've got a lot of people using this server and we've got a uh, a lot of certificates being issued. Um, at some point, we may run into a little bit of a, a block where the number of file descriptors uh, that that limit will get hit. So we can definitely expand that. It's it's fairly easy to do, and it can be done after the fact. So uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, we're not gonna we're not gonna modify that. We don't need to right now. Um, if you're you know in a moderate uh, a low to moderate organization and you're you know not issuing a billion certificates, then you probably shouldn't have any problem. Um, but if you do and it ever co starts complaining about the number of file descriptors open, then you can definitely uh, go ahead and uh, change that. So I'm going to hit yes, I would like to continue. 
and then it's going to ask for our setup type, and I'm just going to go with the uh, go with the flow here and go with uh, the typical, and that should work fine. Now it should automatically recommend your computer name, um, and it should be the host name dot uh, domain dot top level domain, so your fully qualified domain name. Um, as long as that's in the bracket, just go ahead and hit enter. If it's not, then you're going to want to type that in. It'll be the you know um, like dog tag dot my movie db dot local that fully qualified domain name. So. Um, now it's going to ask who the user is that I want to run this as, and because this is going to be uh, kind of driven off of Apache, I'm going to actually run it as the Apache user and the Apache group, so that way Apache has full access to it, and I'm also going to leave the uh, directory server network port to the default of 389, and I can leave the directory server identifier as dog tag, so that's fine because it's going to be the host name of, of the box, so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter on that. And then the suffix or the, the domain portion of the address, um, again, DC equals domain, D, or my movie DB, uh, DC equals local. That's, again, correct. So I'm going to leave that as the default, what it picked up. And I can also leave the directory manager uh, as default. So the only thing I need to do here is set a password. And we'll set an ultra secure password a password. Nobody will be able to hack that. And then we kind of just sit back and we let um, the directory server piece do its thing. And once it's done, it is pretty quick. Um, you'll notice that it does set up a log file here. So if you want to see what it did during the installation, you'll be able to kind of check that log file. Um, otherwise, our directory server is all set up and ready to go. So the next thing that we need to do is actually install the uh, certificate authority portion on top of that, so the way I'm going to do that is just going to be a yum install pki-ca. And then we just kind of sit back and let, let these packages install. All right, and once that's all complete, then the next thing I need to do is uh, address a little bit of a caveat. And that caveat is, is that when you install the dog tag certificate authority system um, onto a CentOS or uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux machine, for whatever reason, the, the default theme doesn't work correctly. And so when you try to pull up the console in a web browser, it doesn't come up properly. And so the way that we fix that is that we actually are going to grab uh, some custom packages or grab the Fedora uh, installation packages and install the Fedora theme onto the certificate authority server. So the first thing that we need to do is um, find the theme that's installed by default. So I'm going to do an RPM-QA and I'm going to grep for ICA-PKI and let's just do PKI and it was IPA. So IPA Okay, and these are the two theme files that are installed by default. So I'm, the first thing I'm going to want to do so that there's no conflicts is I want to get rid of those. And normally you would just do a yum erase in order to get rid of a package. However, because yum is a, a dependency manager, um, among other things, what, what's going to happen is if I try to do a yum erase uh, one of these packages, it's actually going to pull out the dependency being the certificate authority that we just installed. So we don't want that. So I'm just going to use RPM and I'm going to just do an RPM, I want, really want to spell ROM today, RPM-E for erase, and then I'm going to just grab, let's see this first guy, and I want to make sure that I definitely do a dash dash no depths, and that's just going to say remove that package, don't bother calculating or looking at its dependency tree, that's not important, I just want this one package and nothing else removed, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to get rid of that and do the same thing for this common theme. And again, no depths. Okay. And so now if we run that same uh, search, we'll see that we have uh, no theme files at this point installed. So now we need to grab the uh, Fedora theme. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move over to the temp directory here and take a look in there. I got nothing nothing uh, important other than the setup from the 389DS. Um, so what I'm going to do is I need to grab the theme file. Now, um, I had to kind of search around for about 30 minutes uh, to find all of the uh, theme files that we needed from Fedora and make sure that they were the proper version and that they would work and they were matched up and all that. So um, 
instead of you know pointing you guys to those locations which may change or whatever um, I actually have tarred all of those files up everything that you're gonna need and I put it in a tar GZ file and I've just stuck it on the blog so um, if you're looking through the the text tutorial on www.formatc:colon.com, then you'll be able to click a link and and be able to just grab and download the uh, the tar GZ file that I've already uh, assembled for you so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna grab that guy and that can be just uh, located at we can just do a w get here and I'm just gonna paste in the URL and it's www.formatc:colon.com slash blog slash wp uh, hyphen content slash uploads slash 2014 slash 06 and then slash dog tag underscore fedora theme dot tar dot gz and so let's grab that guy sorry for the long uh, URL but All right, and once that's there, let's just take a look. Okay, now we need to unzip that, so we can just do that with a quick tar dash xz vf dog tag fedora theme, and that will um, unzip the nine theme files that we're going to need. Now, um, when we start installing this, we are actually not going to install the, the the very first one here is this PKI CA theme, and that is actually going to have some dependencies based on some of these other guys down here. So we're going to skip that for a quick second, and we're going to grab, we're going to start with the second one on the list. So I'm just going to do a rpm-uvh, and then I'm going to paste in the first uh, rpm file and go ahead and install that. And then I'm just going to go right through the list here and install these other guys. And this is just going to give me a, a warning that the mock build user doesn't exist. It's just going to use root, so that's fine. All right, we've got all those installed. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the last one is going to be this top one that we kind of skipped over. So let's grab that one. Don't forget to grab that because that is the main theme file package. And there we go. So. Now we've got the uh, proper theme installed. Um, the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're actually going to need to make sure that Apache and the directory server that we installed earlier are both turned on and that they are going to turn on uh, when we reboot or if we reboot the server. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is a service, HTTPD, and uh, you can do a start. However, I'm going to need to do a restart because I already have Apache started on this. Um, but let's go ahead and make sure that we see the starting stopping and then I'm also going to do a check config or chk config httpd on to make sure that it is uh, set up so that it will the daemon will start when the server reboots and I'm going to do the same thing I don't remember what the name of the daemon is so we can just go to etsy init.d and then I think it's yep dir serve start and it says it's already running so that's good and then I can go to check config and do a dir SRV on and that will make sure that the directory server also stays on or comes on when the server reboots. Um, now that we've got everything set up as far as the directory server, we've got all of our packages installed, the next piece is going to be actually configuring the uh, dog tag CA and in order to do that um, it is kind of a long-winded command so I'm just going to kind of copy it and I'm going to just paste that guy in there and then we'll kind of go back through the beginning and We'll go through this real quick. So the command in order to configure the, the uh, certificate authority piece is going to be PKI create. And then I'm going to just do a dash PKI underscore instance root. And I'm going to set the, the root to varlib. Um, dash PKI underscore instance name is I'm going to actually change this to my movie DB. You would want to change it to something in your organization. And I like to just do a dash CA so that, you know, it's very clear that this is the CA. Uh, subsystem type is going to be a certificate authority or CA. The agent secure port. Now, all these ports that I'm setting, I'm actually setting according to the dog tag documentation. So these are the default dog tag ports. Um, so you're going to want to keep these ports probably uh, the same. So agent underscore uh, secure underscore port is 9443. EE is for the enterprise server p or the the certificate piece. So EE secure port is 9444. Uh, EE secure client off port is 9446. Admin secure port is 9447. Unsecure port is 9180. Our Tomcat server port is 9701. 
It is going to set up and use a PKI user user and a PKI user group. And then it's going to redirect its config files to Etsy slash, again, in my case, my movie db.ca, and then redirect the logs to var log, again, my movie db-ca, and then we finally set verbose just so we can see what's going on during the installation. So once we have that, uh, that super long-winded command laid in, let's go ahead and just hit enter and watch it install. Okay, and so once it gets done um, installing, you'll see that it'll kind of give us some instructions here. Uh, it will tell us that the, the installation information was pushed already to the install log uh, located in var log my movie DB, which is where we redirected the log files to. Um, we can also run this command if we want to restart the CA, which we probably should since we just configured it. So let's go ahead and run that guy real quick. And that'll restart our CA instance with the new config set. And then also we're going to want to double check our firewall settings. Now, um, I am, for the purpose of this demonstration, I've got my firewall turned off. Um, it's completely up to you as to whether you want to keep your firewall on and actually configure IP tables to be able to allow access to the ports that uh, dog tag needs or to just turn it off. And as soon as this is done restarting here, we will be able to just double check that. All right, and now we can check um, our, the state of our firewall by just typing in service IP tables status and you'll see that mine is turned off. Um, if you want to turn yours off, you would just do a service IP table stop. And then also, um, if you don't plan on running your firewall, then what you would do is another check config IP tables off. And that would just tell the uh, server not to boot IP tables um, when the server starts back up. If you would like, um, what I would recommend actually doing is whenever you s install a new service, something like this, um, I would probably leave it off, like I would actually shut off the firewall and leave it off, walk through the configuration, make sure that the application is working, then turn it back on, and then worry about punching your holes through. So that way you know that the application itself is fully functional, and uh, you know if, if it's not working, then it is definitely your IP tables rules, and you need to kind of you know play with those. Um, and the configuration for your IP table set can be found if you do a vim slash etsy slash config slash uh, IP tables. And that's where your rule set would be, so you'd be able to configure it right there and then just restart um, IP tables. So um, that being said, let's go ahead and see if our server actually came up. So let's grab this whole login string here. You'll notice it does kind of give you a, a one-time pin to run through the uh, or access the uh, admin console configuration wizard. So let's move over here to Firefox. And um, before we, before I actually, well, I'll type in the URL here just to make sure that we're up before I go into my little spiel about, yes. Okay, I understand the risks. Let's add the exception. Let's do all that stuff. And we've got our uh, configuration console. So um, before we move any further, let me just... Um, let me just say that I am using uh, Mozilla Firefox for this particular portion of the uh, installation tutorial. Um, I am generally a Chrome user. I love to use Chrome. Um, I, I find it fast. I find it, you know, wonderful, and it doesn't give me any problems, um, except for when I'm installing DogTag. So for whatever reason, um, using Chrome, I can actually walk through the entire installation process, but at the very end, um, where I start generating certificates and, and start, you know, doing like importing the authentication certificate into my browser, it actually fails and just kind of hangs and spins and does nothing. Um, so I found that for this particular installation, you may want to stick to using Firefox. I have not tried or tested Safari. I have not tried nor tested uh, Internet Explorer. So either of those uh, potentially could work. But if you use either of those and you kind of get to that last st stage and it kind of seems like it's hanging, I would go with Firefox. Um, that's just, you know, I'm, I'm going with what works right now. So let's walk through this, this wizard real quick. It looks like there's a lot of steps here, but it's really not that bad. We're going to keep a lot of the default settings. So in the welcome screen here, we're just going to hit next. Uh, the key store is just going to be a bunch of modules that it has loaded. And we don't really need to do anything here. So we're just going to leave the defaults and click next. 
Um, the same thing for the security domain. Uh, we can just make make sure that we've got you know URLs that look legit here. So we've got dogtag.mymoviedb.local. That looks all good. My movie DB domain is fine. You could rename this if you wanted to. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it all as default and hit next again. Uh, let's see. So the uh, new instance of the CA. Now this is the only one of the things that I am going to change. I'm actually going to type in my movie DB or the name of my organization here, um, just because this is actually going to carry over to the name of the certificate authority certificate. So when I import this into especially Windows clients, instead of it just saying certificate authority, I kind of want it to say something else a little bit more identifying. So um, I'm going to just change that one thing and then click on next. And as far as the uh, PKI hierarchy, um, this I'm making this a self-signed certificate uh, root CA and it's a brand new hierarchy. That just means that this is our first server in our organization. If this was a subordinate server or a, a child server of a master uh, certificate authority that we've already got set up, then I might want to click on this, uh, make it a subordinate. But because this is the first uh, you know, certificate authority server that we ha are setting up in our organization, I'm going to leave that, that first option default and hit next. The next thing is it's going to set up an internal database. And again, I don't really need to touch any of these settings. Um, Localhost 389, uh, dog tag, like everything looks good here. So the only thing I need to set here is a password. So we'll type in password. I would definitely recommend using a, a higher security password than password though. And let's go ahead and hit next again. And the next step is going to be key pair generation. So obviously the server itself needs a pair of RSA keys. Um, I, the only thing I, I'd click here is just to make sure that it uses the default key size of 2048 bits. And it's going to do that by default, but I just like to make sure. So um, I, I'm going to click that and click next and let it generate its keys. And then it's going to show us uh, subject names for our certificates. So um, these are just going to be, you know, for the signing certificate, for the... Uh, SSL certificates, subsystem, and audit certificates. Um, it's just basically giving us a uh, a DN or a uh, distinguished name naming convention for the locations of the certificates within the directory server that we set up earlier. So again, I don't really need to change anything here. I can just leave all these as default. These are fine. Um, and I'm going to click next again. So I told you this was pretty easy. Um, the next thing is that it's actually going to generate uh, certificate requests and it's going to submit those requests to its, itself, to the, uh, the CA, and generate the certificates that it needs. And so in this, we really just need to kind of look down here and make sure that we don't see any red action required labels, which we don't. Here also, if we want to take a look at the certificate signing request, um, we can do that uh, or we can actually look at the you know certificates in, in Base64 encoding. I don't need to do any of that. I'm just going to hit apply to make sure all that's set and then hit next. And then it's going to ask us if we want to export our keys. I would highly, highly, highly recommend. As a matter of fact, I'm, I wouldn't highly recommend. I would say you need to do this. You need to do it for two reasons. One, we are going to have to import our certificates into the system uh, that we're using in order to administer um, these CA. And then also, if we ever want to, in the future, set up subordinate servers or those child CA servers, then we're going to need the certificate chain uh, that we're generating here on the master server. So um, you're going to want to click on that export subsystem keys and certificates and then just set a password. However, make sure you remember this password. If you forget this password, you will not be able to access uh, this this uh, keychain later on. So I'm going to set it for my ultra high tech password of password. And then it's going to ask me, okay, do I want to save this? And I definitely want to save this, so make sure I, I put this in a location. Make sure I click Save File and put it in a location where I'm going to remember, which by default, it's just going to download it to uh, my Downloads folder. And then I'm going to hit Next again. This is just telling me that it was going to do that. And now it's going to ask me to import and trust the certificate chain from the CA. So I need to, I need to do that uh, before I click on the Next button. Okay, so in order to uh, import the certificate, what I need to do is go to the folder where the certificate uh, was downloaded or exported to, which happens to be my download directory because I'm using Firefox. So um, here on my Mac, if I go ahead and open up my downloads directory, uh, you will see that I've got this save PKCS12. And 
Um, the only problem with this file is that it actually didn't give it a, an extension. So I'm actually going to give it an extension of pkcs12 and hit enter. Now, again, I am on a Mac, so um, the renaming portion is going to be the same on a Windows box. However, the import is going to be slightly different. You're going to probably need to uh, open up your uh, certificate MMC and import the certificate if you're running on a Windows machine. And I'm probably going to be doing a tutorial on how to do that uh, afterward. Um, but if not, it's a fairly simple process. All you got to do is um, basically just you know open up a Microsoft Management Console, like go to your Start menu, go to Run, go to MMC. Uh, when the MMC opens up, then you're going to go to like File, and then uh, what is it? Oh, Add Remove Snap-ins. And then inside of the snap-ins, when, uh, when you click on that, it's going to give you a list of different snap-ins that you can add. You're going to pick um, certificates, and then it's going to give you an option between like user and system, and you're going to pick system, and then I think it's one more option where it'll say like local system, and you hit yes, local system, and that will open up the, the console. And then um, inside of there, in under like trusted, what is it, trusted certificate authorities, I think, you're going to like just right-click on that, and then there'll be a all tasks and then import cert. And from that window, from the import cert, you'll be able to import this PKCS12 file. So um, on a Mac, however, a little simpler. I just double click this guy. It asks me for a password, which is the password that I set when I exported, which is in my case, password. And that's going to bring up the certificate authority. It's going to ask me to trust it. I'm going to say always trust. Type in my real password for my computer. And boom, there we go. We just added all of these certificates as trusted certificates. So now we've got the subsystem, the certificate authority, all of those. So um, now I can go ahead and get rid of these windows now that that's imported. And I can click on Next. And now I am going to create a authentication certificate and so what the authentication certificate is going to do is it's going to allow me to actually administrate the administrator portion of the dog tag console um, the way that uh, a lot of applications uh, will authenticate a user and give them permissions is based on a username and password however with dog tag because you're dealing with certificates they take it a step farther and they actually issue out a certificate and if your browser does not have that certificate then you are not going to be able to gain access to the administrator portion of the console. So that's going to be something to note if you're in an infrastructure where a lot of you know other people, maybe a team of people, are going to need to access this and, and, and actually approve certificate requests when they come in, then they're going to need this certificate installed as well. So um, I'm just going to type in uh, mymoviedb.local.com gmail.com, which is an email I set up for this, this particular domain, and set a little bit of a different password here. Okay. And now it's going to say, okay, uh, let's see, so this is an invalid email request. So, ah, it would help if I actually put at gmail.com. Let's go next again. And now it's generating the keys. And it's saying your personal certificate has been installed. You should keep a backup copy of this certificate. Okay, so at this point, I should have the certificate for uh, the dog tag system already installed. This is not just a, you know, hey, you should do this. This is a, you need to do this because without this personal certificate, you are, like I said, not going to be able to administer the administrative portion of the uh, console. So um, the certificate is used to grant, you know, agent access to the subsystem. So that's okay. We're gonna hit okay. And we're gonna hit next again. And then it says we are all done. So we wanna, again, restart the server um, by typing this command right here. So let's go ahead and we'll do that and show you how to grab that certificate to, to back it up here in a minute. But let's first restart the server. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm just going to paste that line in and restart. And now also while this is restarting, so something to note is so out of those certificates that we imported, or I should say exported and then imported, 
Um, you'll notice here that we've actually got this, let's see, where is it, the actual certificate authority. Um, this is the private key. I didn't really need to import the private key. I only needed the actual public. So do not, ex uh, do not import this private key um, to every single user because that's you know giving the servers private key. Don't imp don't import any of these private keys. Um, you're the administrator. Uh, the person setting it up can go ahead and import them. But then what what you're going to want to do is actually just take these certificates and you're going to want to right click on these certificates. You're going to want to right click on these certificates and then export these uh, export these certificates. And these are the ones that you're going to actually hand out to your users. Um, that are going to have to, or your administrators that, that are going to have to administer the system. So this certificate authority uh, certificate is the key certificate that we're going to need. So you're going to want to definitely right click on that. You're going to want to export that um, to just a, a certificate. You can like save it anywhere. I'll save it like for instance on the desktop. Uh, let's see. And you're literally just going to name it like my movie. DB or your organization uh, and a SIR file is fine. A SIR file is actually probably better because a SIR file will work with Android devices and iOS as well so that you can import that certificate into mobile devices. So once you export that, um, then you'll have a certificate file that shows up and this is the certificate that you need to install on all of your client machines. If you have this certificate installed under trusted certificate authorities, then, then that computer will trust any certificate, any future certificate that we issue through this CA. So that is that is very important. Um, okay, so let's just check our status here. We should be all rebooted, so we're good to go. And so now we should be able to go ahead and open up our dog tag instance. Uh, so let's go back to our console, and it will give us a services page link right here. So we're going to click on that understand the risks, add the exception, get certificate, confirm, okay. And, okay, so now we are at our uh, actual entry point to our uh, dog tag installation. So um, what I would do is I would bookmark this page because um, it might be a little bit tough to just remember or you just remember that you're going go to go to, you know, port 9447 slash CA slash services. Um, definitely take a note of that. Now there's two two parts of this, and I'm actually just going to copy this guy real quick. There's two parts of this, right? So the SSL end user services is going to be the place that you can have wide open to everybody. So anybody in your organization, any of your developers, um, any of your IT staff, anybody that needs a, cert a certificate is going to be able to access this. And what they can do is they can go into SSL uh, certificates here, and let's just add all this to the page, and um, what this is going to do is list out a bunch of different certificate profiles, which are essentially like certificates that the CA server can issue. And so, for instance, I'm going to go with a, with uh, the example of using SSL, and you can definitely go through and take a look at all these different certificates that we can issue. Um, but the big one that um, that I'm going to be using or showing in this particular example is going to be the manual server uh, certificate enrollment. Okay, and if we click on that guy that's going to be where we are going to be able to take a CSR or a certificate signing request and we can actually paste it into this box right here and then the requester can you know put in their name and their email and their phone number and hit submit and what that'll do is that'll actually send that through the system and uh, at that point they will just have to you know alert IT that they've submitted a certificate request you'll be able to go in and actually uh, approve that certificate and so I guess for for demonstration purposes we can go ahead and do that um, so what I'm going to do here is, let's just say on the dog tag server itself, um, if I wanted to issue a certificate from this guy, I am, I'm going to do a CD into slash uh, Etsy PKI TLS private, which is going to be where uh, my private uh, keys and my certificate signing requests uh, are coming from. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is generate a private key. And the way that I do that is I'm going to use OpenSSL which you uh, would have to have installed on the server. Um, so we can check that first, rpm-qa, and then we'll grep for OpenSSL, and we'll see that we do have OpenSSL installed. And so I'm going to do an OpenSSL gen key, and then specify as the outbound file being my 
let's say dog tag dot my movie db dot local and then I'm gonna specify it as a 2048 bit key oh it's gen RSA got wrapped up there gen RSA because it's we need to specify the type of key so let's go ahead and there we go so now we've got our key generated which is going to be right here, and I'm actually going to rename this just so that we let's move dog tag to dog tag dot key. So we want to specify that it is the key file. Okay, and then now after we have our key, then we can actually create our certificate signing request. And the way that we do that is again with OpenSSL, and we are going to make a request for a new key. And the in file is going to be the dog tag uh, mymoviedb.local key. And the out file is going to be dog tag dot mymoviedb.local.csr. Uh, and again, let's see. Ah, we don't need rec. And actually, this is not key. We need to specify key. Let's try that. There we go. So the first thing it's going to do is just ask us for our country. Uh, we can type in U.S. And you can fill out. A lot of these are just optional fields. Um, I can, like, leave a lot of these blank if I want to and just hit enter, enter, uh, organization name. I can even enter organizational unit name. I can hit enter. The common name, however, is required. So I'm going to type in dog tag dot my movie db dot local. And mind you, like, even though this is the host name or the fully qualified domain name of the server, I'm just generating this for uh, instructional purposes or demo purposes. If you've got a website called, you know, I'm crazy and look at me .com, then when you generate your certificate, that certificate is going to be for, you know, I'm crazy, look at me .com, not for the server name. The, it, the server name is completely an arbitrary piece of information or the common name. It's going to it's going to go along with your application. So if your application, you know, whatever the name of the application is, the fully qualified domain name of the application, that's what you're going to want to, you know, fill in for all of this stuff, including for the key and the CSR. Um, if it was, you know, I'm crazy, look at me dot com, you know, when I generated my key, it would have been I'm crazy, look at me dot com dot key. But since I'm just, you know, demonstrating real quick with the with the server here, I'm going to just put in the dog tag dot my movie DB dot local. Um, again, I'm just going to hit enter on the uh, email address. I do not need a challenge password, so I'm going to go ahead and just hit enter again to keep the, both of those blank. And now if I take a look, I should have my CSR file. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cat that CSR file. And you'll see that this is the format that your CSR should uh, be in. It should actually say begin certificate request. So I'm going to copy this whole thing right here. So if I now wanted to generate a certificate with this, what I would do is go back over to my dog tag uh, certificate manager. I would actually paste this guy in, this whole CSR, and then I can just fill out my name is tester, tester at dog tag. What's the movies? Five, 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 five. The number made famous by movies, and then click on submit. And this will actually say congratulations. Um, you know, it'll tell your user that they've submitted their request and that their request ID is number seven. So what you can, you know, at that point do is they can give the administrative staff that, uh, you know, request ID. And once they do that, then you will be able to um, come back to this page right here, which is going to be, you know, the uh, CA services. And you as the administrator are going to need this agent services uh, link. So if I click on that agent services, you'll notice that the first thing it's going to do is it's going to say, hey, this has asked you for your identity with a certificate. What do you want to use? And it's going to pull up automatically that CA certificate that we generated for the admin. So like I said, you're definitely going to need that or it's just going to tell you flat out that you, you're not authorized. So I'm going to hit OK. And uh, again, I'm going to understand the risks. Yes. Now here where it's asking me to uh, uh, validate the certificate, what I would probably do is I would actually, at this point, I would take and go to my uh, view certificate options in Firefox, click on details, and then I would export this certificate. So I'm going to do that right now, 
and I'm going to say dog tag my movie db dot local dash uh, auth cert. So I know that this is imp an important cert, cert. And again, I'm going to just go ahead and save this on my desktop and hit save. Then hit OK on that. And so now if I look on my desktop, I've got this uh, dog tag dot my movie db dot local uh, auth cert, and then that should have exported as a PEM file. So if it's not named dot PEM, I would go ahead and just rename that. And so there it's a PEM file. So without this certification, I cannot get to this area. So this is very important that we save this cert. Um, and there are other options as far as being able to export the cert in different formats on that export screen. So um, those are very important things. So now, um, essentially, in order to issue the cert, once I'm in the agent services here, I can just do list requests, and I can uh, I can actually type in a uh, the specific number. So I can say starting request number seven and hit find, and you'll see that the certificate uh, for dog tag my movie db local the request is right here. So and it's in a pending status. So I can actually click on the number of that guy, and it'll give me all the information about the cert, including the original cert request. Um, all I need to do is go all the way down to the bottom, and I can put in notes if I want to, but then I can just say approve request and hit submit. Once I do that, I would then be able to scroll down all the information, and I would be able to see the certificate in the base 64 encoded format, copy that guy, and I would be able to push it uh, or send it back to the client that requested the cert, and they would at that point, oops, let's do that copy. They would at that point be able to go back to their server and actually change directories into the certs folder and do a vi or vim uh, dog tag dot my movie db dot local dot crt. Paste that guy in there and then they've got their cert. Um, the only other thing that you may want to do is, again, we've got this certificate authority cert that we uh, have. We may want to include that also as a chain uh, request when we're setting up our Apache. So the, we would actually point the SSL cert to the uh, dog tag mymoviedb local.cert. We would point the uh, chain file cert or the chain file CA cert um, at the certificate authority cert, and then we would point the key to the key that we generated when we generated the CSR. So um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. Um, if you did find this tutorial uh, useful, if you liked it, then please uh, hit the subscribe button below and feel free to leave any feedback, comments, suggestions, requests, uh, anything down in the comments section below as well. And with that, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Thanks.